The benefits of this are just uncomparable, really. It's fantastic to see people's faces when you show them the answer to their problem, which sometimes they've been looking for the answer to for several years. We're taking a digital record, digitally peeling away, and digitally identifying and then sharing the results. Here's our problem. We have um, a cauldron in a lump of earth, which we excavated from site, and we want to know what's in that lump of soil without actually excavating it. The cauldrons are found in um, Chiseldon, which is in Wiltshire, just south of Swindon. As the site was excavated, it revealed 13 cauldrons in a pit which was two metres in diameter. And cauldrons of this period are incredibly rare. This find is the largest number of cauldrons which has been found together um, in one deposit, but it's also more than double the known number of cauldrons of this period. What we have um, available to us here as archaeologists um, is one of the largest high-energy scanners of its kind in the world. In essence, what that means we can do is look inside very dense archaeological materials and look inside very large accumulations of archaeological material, whether that's soil or ceramics or metal, and we can see it at extremely high resolution. So here we have a very high-energy, high-resolution CT scanner, which today we're using to help archaeologists see inside and understand the object that you see behind me. And if I turn the scanner on, I can show you what it'll do. So the door itself is about four tonnes of lead, and it's lead shielding because they are X-ray sources producing ionising radiation, so it's, it's pure shielding from the radiation effects. And it works. The, when we measure the radiation, there's more radiation coming out of the red bricks in the building than there are coming out of one of these machines operating at full power. Three, two, one. In essence, it's the same principle as a medical CT scanner, so if you went for a CAT scan, you have an X-ray source and a detector which revolve around your body. In these machines, because the samples that we're using are inanimate, usually industrial or archaeological objects, they can spin around and the source and the detector stays fixed. The detector is about 40 centimetres wide. The cauldron is more like a metre wide, something like that. So in order to scan the whole of it, we had to shift the panel to one side, take a few radiographs, move it across, move it across, move it across. We had to use four positions. The cauldron was scanning for a whole weekend, but when you compare that to 600 hours of man time excavating it, it's relatively short. objects are showing up very bright so this is definitely metal which is incredibly exciting because we can you know we can actually here you can see very clearly um, you can see the copper alloy go up behind behind the iron section mm -hmm. the benefits of seeing this virtually before you start excavating um, the object is that as you excavate the cauldron becomes very unstable, the, the metal is very, very thin and very mineralised. So as soon as you start taking the soil away from around it, there's nothing else supporting it. And the cauldron will eventually have to be taken out in, in fragments and probably never be whole again. That's probably what we call the original surface, which is as close to the original dimensions of the handle that we could get to before it went in the ground and became corroded. So that's fantastic. The amazing possibility here is that we can replicate many of the processes that we already perform as archaeologists with real material but do them in a controlled digital way and also share the results of our work with an enormous population of scholars and, and also the public in terms of time, in terms of cost and in terms of the risk to the objects themselves doing it digitally is a, a massive improvement. That's fantastic, that's brilliant. I mean, you've done my job for me. <laughs>